Let's all laugh at the sugars, part 10. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, enabling you to have a glimpse at some of the nonsense that appears in the comments section that you may not have come across. And of course, as always, to hear the delicious smack of the ultra. Putting these people in their places by highlighting their inability to understand evidence, their ability, their inability to use correct grammar and punctuation their repeated failure to spell the name of their hero correctly. Naturally, I know that these doofuses are not going to pay any attention to the way that they've been corrected. They're too set in their ways in that regard. But what is invariably interesting about these fools is that they run away. They rarely make a more than once appearance, which perhaps underlines the fact that they may well be bots. It certainly does reinforce the fact that they are unable to deal with the ultra. Let us bring on more of the sugar lumps for your amusement and for you to laugh at them. Thomas N. pops up, short and sweet. Harry's wife is beautiful and you are ugly, mofo. Thomas, you've never seen me, so therefore you can't describe me. But well done on judging somebody that you've never met. Something, of course, your band of assholes invariably engage in by saying, you can't judge her because you've never met her and you don't know her. You're entitled to the view that she's beautiful. There'll be people who'll disagree with you. But the fact is, to engage in an ad hominem attack against me not only provides me with a little morsel of fuel and for me to curl my delicious lips in amusement at your petty struggle against me. Incognito, you have nothing to do to delegate your life and a whole podcast to this. Well, not only are you unable to use the English language, which is no surprise because you are a sugar, but the fact is, I do have plenty to dedicate my life to. Because, like every other sugar, if you'd bothered to use your ears rather than spout your bigoted nonsense through your keyboard, you'd have learned so much more about me and of the various things that I do. You'll have learned that I have a private and professional life. You will have seen on my Instagram page some of the places that I go to. Indeed, you'll have seen me in action in dealing with various sporting activities. You'd realise from the things that I talk about, the things that I write about, that I go to a variety of places all around the world. And you would have an inkling as to the things that I might do also, which shows that I have other things to do to delegate my life to, which you moron can't even get your sentence correct but oh look look who it is thomas n has popped up again why all those bananas incorrectly spelled in your clip i'll help you with that thomas because again if you had bothered to watch the videos and it appears more than once i talk about the bananas of empowerment indeed if you were such a supporter of harry's wife as you claim to be you'd know that she embarrassed herself humiliated herself and made harry feel particularly stupid when she wrote through the sharpie on bananas that were being given to sex workers supposed messages of hope and encouragement you'd understand that but because you operate with tunnel vision and you barely look up from staring at the ground you don't understand these things. I'm sure you're our Tiny Willy. I don't know who Tiny Willy is. Is this a person? Are you trying to suggest that I have a small penis? I haven't. I have a large penis. And if I were to ever meet you, Thomas N., I'd probably beat you around the head with it, knocking you into submission. Clarkson has been cancelled by Amazon Prime. Good riddance. Well, thanks for sharing us sharing with us your views about Clarkson, which again just demonstrates the sugary nature of just who you are. But two attempts by Thomas N., and we have to say he has succeeded most admirably in making himself look like the pride grain aid tool that he is. Let's find out who next is waiting. Next up, we have someone who goes by the name of Higher Realms. Dude get over it. Harry is playing his role in bringing down the system. Really? Period. A lot of yal. Ah, there we are. Yal commonly appears in the use of the sugars. A lot of yal will go out kicking and screaming, but the colonizer regime is coming to an end no matter what. 
Perhaps you'd be so kind as to explain to me what this coloniser regime is. Do you mean the existence of the countries as they stand will suddenly cease to exist? If so, it's going to be a no, I'm afraid. It was a good run, the royal facade. It isn't a facade, it's an actuality. The royal family does exist, it's not put on. So perhaps you need to try and understand what the word facade means. But it's over. Accept it. Sit back, enjoy the show, and move on. No amount of hating Harry's wife. Again, you see, you engage in this stupid uh, situation of assuming that it's hate, when it's simple dislike of her behaviours. But you always have to announce it as hate. Obsessing over her only feeds it energy. Well, we know that talking about her provides with fuel. That's what this channel talks about, amongst many other things. It is not obsessing over it, it's simply explaining it. So you're helping to escalate the inevitable. Not really. The modernisation of the monarchy is something that would have happened irrespective of Harry's wife. It's something that Charles has always spoken about once he came to the throne. And furthermore, Elizabeth wasn't going to take huge steps forward and most people didn't need her to do so. They recognised that she had reigned from 1952 and that she had a different outlook upon things. And because of the huge number of years of service that she provided, unlike the mere 72 days that your hero has uh, put in to her supposed service and the bandwagoning that she engages in, many people took the view that because of that, uh, Queen Elizabeth was allowed, if you will, to remain steadfast in wanting the institution to remain largely in the way that it did. Charles, however, has come along and he'll want to make changes. He wants to slim it down. He's having a slimmed down coronation. So these things are being altered as a consequence of public mood and the movement of time. Nothing to do with Harry or Harry's wife. Much as Harry's wife would love to think that she's the modernising force, she isn't. In actual fact, higher realms, although I think you'll struggle to grasp this, the behaviour of Harry's wife and her prisoner is actually edifying support for the royal family as a consequence of their unpleasant behaviours. Go and suck on that. Next we have Tamara. Tamara pops up quite frequently, actually, but usually there's so much bile and nonsense that's spouted from her that it's just as easy to have the comments deleted. But we have allowed this one through. I'm shocked that you have been balanced here. Well, you ought not to be. I invariably am. And haven't blamed it all on Harry's wife. I don't. Most days you just sound like a bitter, jilted lover out for revenge because Harry's wife didn't pick you. Oh, Tamara, how foolish and dim-witted you are. I have far superior specimens available to me than such as Harry's wife. I have much better choices of cuts of meat compared to her, you know. She is mutton compared to the delicious lamb that I feast upon. She is the raggedy edges compared to the delicious steak that I sink my beautiful teeth into. The fact is, I'm not bitter about her, and I'd be delighted that she didn't pick me. Why? Because I wouldn't want her. So, unfortunately for you, Tamara, you demonstrate again the ineptitude of the sugar of understanding very little about me before starting to type and demonstrating and demonstrating to all of us with very clear and obvious emphasis that you are a fool, a clown, and prejudiced. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.